Hey, how's it going guys? This is Jason from MicrosoundingSupply.com and today I've got a Mac report for you guys that quarter fan spins and does not turn on. So I wanted to show you guys how I fixed this board, but before we get started on that, I wanted to let you know about our website. So, if you are a, a computer shop, a phone shop, a technician, a tinker, or anyone looking for microsoundering parts, supplies, tools, or service, check out our website, it's microsoundingsupply.com. We have got a ton of parts ranging from iPhones to iPads, MacBooks, Xboxes, PS4s, Nintendo Switches, and we've got all the tools and supplies to repair these devices as well. Everything we sell is stocked in the US, everything we stock is shipped from the US, and if you are in the US and want to talk to us, we are here to help you. If you enjoy shopping on Amazon, then you'll have no trouble shopping with us, and you can do it at any, at any time of day. And just like Amazon, we offer free two-day shipping. So with that said, let's head into the shop and take a look at this MacBook board. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna see me do is plug the computer into the charger uh, and see what happens uh, when the computer tries to turn on. And as you can see, the fan starts to spin and then slowly stops spinning. And it does this in a cyclic pattern where it starts, stops, starts, stops, starts, stops. And the reason why the computer is doing this is because it's being told that everything is okay and it's ready to turn on. And then when it tries to turn on, it only detects that there is an issue uh, somewhere uh, in the computer and, it uh, and it's told to shut down. And so it turns on, detects an issue, shuts down, turns on, detects an issue, shuts down, and so on and so forth. And things that can cause this are issues like current sensing. And that's the first thing I usually check when I get a, a computer that's doing what's called quarter fan spin, where it turns on and turns off. Now, current sensing is important because a computer wants to know how much current or power it's using in order to determine things like battery life. Uh, the computer also wants to know if it's using too much power at a time, because if it's using too much power, then that's usually a sign that there is something wrong and it'll shut down. The way we check current sensing is by checking the current sensing resistors. And in this chip, the current sensing resistors are on pin 17 and 18, as well as 27 and 28. And what you saw me do is use my multimeter to measure the resistance in the circuit and make sure it matches up to the resistance on the schematic. So in this case, between pins 27 and 28, we want to see about 20 ohms, and pins 17 and 18, we want to see about two, two to three ohms or so. And so that measured all right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on from there. The next place I like to look for damage or uh, corrosion is along the top edge of the board. And this doesn't really even have to do with uh, quarter fan spin, this is just any board repair in general. And the top, the reason I look at the top edge is because the top edge is the side that goes against the vents. And it's very easy for liquid or any sort of uh, humidity or whatnot to get in through the vents and cause corrosion. So as you can see, I've already spotted some corrosion over here by the SPI ROM chip. And there's this resistor here that looks like absolute gar dog shit. And so that indicates to me that this board has in fact seen liquid. So I'm making a note of all these areas that are damaged. And over here we've got a couple of resistors and capacitors that have been knocked off. And once I get an idea of what sort of damage uh, has occurred because of the, whatever has entered through the vents of the computer and got onto the board, I'm gonna go ahead and look it up in the schematic. The JTAG connector has also been removed from this board by the shop that sent this to me most likely. And uh, even though there's a pad rip, that's a, actually a pretty good guess when it comes to quarter fan spin and liquid damage on the board. Now this resistor here that looks like shit is R5605. And when I look up R5605 on the schematic, I can see that this is part of a current sensing circuit, specifically the uh, discrete BMOD current sense slash filter circuit. Now this circuit is responsible for uh, current battery monitoring, which is what BMOD stands for, current sensing. Um, so basically it monitors how much current is coming, going into and out of the battery. And uh, I'm not particularly interested in this in terms of quarter fan spin, but because it is current sensing related, there's a chance that it might be um, causing our issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure the resistance on it and make sure it matches up to the 100K it should be on the schematic. This one is 64 million ohms. And if you there, it's that's gonna be a lot. So that resistor is blown, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. So first off, I need to desolder it and clean up the pads because they look pretty oxidized from the corrosion. Now, I'd like to keep these videos more uh, technically oriented, not because I don't think desoldering is important, but because I think typically people are chipped up more when it comes to diagnostics and reading schematics. 
So that's why you don't really see me going over a lot of the soldering in these videos. However, if that is something that interests you and you'd like to see more soldering, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, I'd like to hear from you. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and cleaned up the pads and put some fresh solder on them. So I'm going to pull off a resistor from the donor board now and solder it back onto the board. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and check the resistance of the new resistor and make sure it's 100k, which it is. And I'm going to check the ones next to it and the traces go in between everything and make sure that the corrosion uh, from the liquid did not break up any of the traces. And so everything's coming out okay, which is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if by chance this happened to fix my quarter fan spin issue. Now, as you probably guessed, that was no good. So we're gonna go ahead and keep on looking on this board. Now, the other spot that was corroded is this spot by the SPI ROM here. And the SPI ROM is pretty interesting because The SPI ROM is particularly interesting when it comes to quarter fan spin because it holds all the firmware and instructions for the CPU and the PCH. So if the CPU and the PCH cannot com communicate with the SPI ROM because there is a broken trace, say from uh, liquid damage and corrosion, then it's going to end up in a cycle where even though you have all the power rails present and the computer is being told to turn on, because the CPU isn't able to communicate and get its instructions, it'll tell the computer to, to turn off. And you'll end up with a cycle where the computer turns on, CPU is unable to communicate, and tells the computer to turn off, and so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna try and clean up these test points and this corrosion uh, with uh, some alcohol and a X-Acto knife and try to see how they look. And these test points aren't really particularly interesting because they're just PP1V05SO and that's not really going to affect the communication between the SPI ROM and the CPU unless they are shorted to ground, which they are not. This test point below it, which is PCH HS IO power enable, is actually pretty interesting because this does go to the PCH and uh, it is very corroded and looks like shit, so uh, I have a feeling that this could be related to our issue. Now the reason I'm interested in this test point in particular is because that big spot of corrosion we saw earlier is right on the trace that connects to it. And so I'm going to go ahead and scrape away at, at it with the razor blade and see if I can spot a break in the line. Now I was not able to spot any sort of break in the line, um, so I'm going to go ahead and use a razor blade to scrape away the beginning of the trace and see if it's still connected to the test point.
OL means open line, so that's no good. Um, that means that this trace is in fact broken. Just to verify that that reading should not be OL, I'm gonna go ahead and check it on the donor board, even though the donor board looks like garbage. And I do measure perfect continuity here, so we do have a broken trace on our board. Let's talk about why this line is important. So this test point that's corroded is this one right here on the back of the board, PCH HSIO power enable. And if we search that up on the schematic, PCH IO HSIO power enable, we can see that it comes out of this chip here, U0500, which is our PCH. And here's the line coming out. And from there it connects up to this pull-up resistor here, R1629. And from there, it goes on to the on pin on U8005. Now, U8005 is the 1.05 volt PCH HSIO switch. So, this chip is responsible for acting as a literal switch like you would have for your lights. It takes PP1V05SO, and when it's told to switch on by PCH HSIO power enable, It'll turn PP1V05SO into PP1V05SOSW underscore PCH HSIO. And this power rail here, if you follow where this goes, goes into U0500 to give power to the CPU slash PCH. So if U0805 cannot uh, cannot communicate with the PCH because this line here, PCH HSIO power enable, is physically uh, broken, then it's never going to uh, be told to turn uh, to turn PP1V05SO into PP1V05SO SW PCH HSIO. So my solution to this is going to be to run a wire between the beginning of the trace and the test point. And I verified that there's still continuity from the test point to U8005. So as long as the trace is not broken between the back side of the board and the front side of the board underneath the CPU, then we should be good. And this wire that I'm using to run the jumper is just regular 0.10 millimeter enameled wire, which you can get on our website, microsolderingsupply.com. And now that we have continuity between the test point and the trace, uh, we're going to go ahead and test out the board. Now that we have fan spin, I'm going to go ahead and, and replace all the components that I pulled off earlier with ones from a donor board.
So there you have it guys, that was a quarter fan spin repair on an 820-3435 MacBook Air. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and if you like the format of this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions or questions about anything in this video, please leave a comment below. And again, if you are in the hobby or business of microsoldering and are interested in any of the parts, tools, or service seen in this video, check us out online at microsoldingsupply.com.